Good evening, everybody, and on Bear Hill Gang TV. Once again, we like to thank you, everybody, for tuning in for another great night of race talk right here on PA Sprint Car Live. To my left, from PAPosseRacing.com, Justin Snyder. Justin, thanks for coming on the show again, bud. Yep, thanks for having me. Uh, we got some good guests on today. I think it's going to be a good show, and I'm looking forward to it. Absolutely. I, I was pumped all day about this show. I can't wait to get this started. And off to my right, Burt Wojcik. Pretty good. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. Got, uh, like Justin said, some good guests tonight. We got uh, Tyler Bear from uh, Regular Report Royal. We're going to talk to him about his uh, new ride up there at the Speed Palace. And we also got the, a newbie in Pennsylvania, Ryan Linder. His uh, X1 uh, chassis operations being moved to Pennsylvania. So uh, talk to him, see how excited he is to be a little closer to uh, where his products can be used. Yeah, absolutely. I can't wait to uh, talk to both of these drivers. It's going to be a good one. But uh, we're going to have them on here later in the show. Uh, right now, uh, a couple of racing announcements for some events coming up this weekend. Pioneer Pole Building Motorsports Race Car and Trade Show down in Oaks, PA. Uh, Bert, you said you were going to take a little trip down there this weekend. Yeah, I'm going to go down and check it out. Uh, there's been some a few previews going out today, uh, some cars being uh, unveiled. Uh, the first one I saw was obviously Brandon Raymer's uh, number 88. That thing looks fast already, <laughs> so that's going to be pretty neat to see. And also, probably one of my favorite cars I've seen that was displayed today is uh, the Roberts Racing number 14W of Ryan Watt, a Bridgeport regular and also a Big Diamond in, uh, regular as well. That car, it's red, it's blue. I believe there's some black in it too. It looks badass, that big block. I'm not sure if this is the, big, or the Super Dirt Car car, okay. but that thing might win best of show. I'm not sure if, if anything else has got to touch it. It thing looks slick. Definitely, if you are a uh, dirt modified fan for big blocks or small blocks, whatever, uh, at least a modified fan, the Motorsports Show is definitely the way to go for you this weekend. Uh, this Saturday from 2 o'clock in the afternoon till 11 in the evening, there's going to be raffles, auctions, drivers, interviews, uh, and also they're going to have a DJ. Don't forget, beer and soda will be provided, and also bring your own favorite dish. Uh, check the Beer Hill Gang out on their Facebook page for more details. And Justin, I saw some uh, photos of a lot of the giveaways they're going to have at this Beer Hill Gang uh, Winter Gathering, and I, <laughs> somebody needs to go. <laughs> yeah, it seems like they got uh, a lot of good supporters. Obviously, we know uh, we know what they do, uh, you know, week in, week out for this for the for the drivers, for the tracks, for the teams throughout the year. It's a nice way for everyone to get together, uh, you know, get ready for the racing season and have a little fun. Uh, I know there's going to be some good drivers out there. I think they got quite the roster. Yeah, I think they got uh, Brian Monteith is going to be there, Ronnie Westhaver, just to name a few, maybe Corey Haas. Yeah, it's uh, it should be a great time. It's uh, it's obviously a nice way to uh, you know, get back into the racing season, and uh, you know, it's it should be a fun time. I think it's going to be great. Absolutely, uh, Big Matt Mailer and Kayla Mailer are definitely uh. Iron out the details, and it's going to be a good time. I'm going to be there as well. However, it's knocking on the door. Racing Extravaganza, February 4th and 5th. At a, a tweet from Scott Gobrak. He has over 100 cars going to be there. That's amazing. Yeah, I mean, we can't say it enough. Uh, that, that show used to, when it was dirt tracking, it was – the show to go to. I mean, yeah. it, it lived up to motorsports out in Philly. Yep. Um, this year, it's it's slowly climbing back to that place, and I I can't wait to see what they've got up their sleeves. I know they've got quite a few uh, seminars, uh, quite a few locals, some, mm -hmm. some pretty decent names that are going to be there, and uh, it's there's a little bit of everything for everyone. I mean, you, I know they have the the misfits, the little, little dirt tracking contest. Yeah, they've yeah, got, they've got uh, Miss Racing Extravaganza. So, I mean, they've got see what kind of race cars are there. I know a lot of sprint cars are going to be there. Obviously, that's our specialty. But the Sinsuski is going to have a modified show. Maybe some modified drivers can come down as well. It'd be pretty cool to see him down there. Uh, like I said, I know Sinsuski's booth this weekend at uh, Motorsports, but it doesn't sound like they're going to have a car ready to go this weekend. Um, but we'll have to wait and see. But um, it'd be pretty cool to see some of the modifieds down there, but I just can't wait. Over 100 cars already pre-registered, and we're, what, three weeks away from the show? I mean, that's only going to grow, hopefully. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I'm really excited to see what's going to happen at Racing Extravaganza. It's more of a car show than anything like that. You don't really have, like, I noticed that motorsports is a lot more like a PRI of Pennsylvania. That's what it seems like motorsports is going to be. So, I mean, either way, you get the best of both worlds wherever you're at. Where they're going to go to motorsports this weekend and racing extravaganza, but hopefully you guys get to go to both because we'll be at racing extravaganza and cause shenanigans, won't we? Yes, we will. We're going to have a booth right along uh, the Bear Hill Gang. We're going to share a booth with everybody and uh, 
do some driver interviews, and also the Bear Hill Gang has a seminar. So we will do a PA Sprint Car Live show there, and uh, I think we're going to have some pretty good drivers lined up. Yeah, we're going to try to, uh, you know, kind of relive some Bear Hill Gang memories and, you know, maybe get some of the past drivers, the current drivers. Obviously, the Bear Hill Gang spreads far and wide through sprint car racing, so we could go in multiple directions there. But obviously, the more the merrier, and uh, it'll be very exciting. Uh, once again, ladies and gentlemen, if you're just joining us, we are live. Uh, we like to hear what you fans have to say, so please, throughout the show, comment below in the comment section to talk about whatever you want in the racing world, especially. Um, other than that, no real big news. Uh, I heard, I mean, like I said, racing extravaganza, they're really promoting it. Like I said, over 100 race cars. That's believable. I mean, that's crazy. We talked a little bit last week about, like you said, you know, there when it was dirt tracking, it was in a down, you know, downhill. It was not going very good. Scott, Colt Gauss took it over, and it's on the up and up. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's just like and better. And it seems like every day. It's not just something they're promoting and waiting to happen. It seems that they're still making improvements. And I don't doubt that we may have more cars when, when the show arrives, uh, February yeah. 4th and 5th. Or, you know, if you know, there'll be something else that maybe we didn't see or expect. You never know. I mean, there is some racing news that normally we would find out about drivers right now. And, and there are some teams that we really don't know uh, what their schedules are going to be this year. And that's what I would do. If I was a team owner, let's keep it hush-hush and break it out February 4th and 5th and let the fans see it firsthand. Yeah, I mean, you've got so many drivers, so many cars. Uh, like you said, a, a lot of a lot of things seem to be kind of in place already. Um, a lot of schedules are out. A lot of drivers have announced where they're going, what they're doing. There's still a few missing pieces out there. So, you know, hopefully we'll have some, uh, you know, some breaking news that maybe we can bring to you guys live here on PS Sprint Car Live. Speaking of that, with racing extravaganza, Brian Snyder just posted your first 100 at the racing extravaganza, your first 100 through the gate, I believe, on Saturday. Get a chance or get entered to, for a chance to wave the green flag opening day at Susky. Wow, that is – wow. If you're a race fan, you get one, you get a great bird's-eye view of the racing on the flag oh, stand. Yeah. Two, you get to throw the green flag. Could you ask for anything more? I don't really think so. Really can't. That's a great thing Scott's doing. I, I remember you as a kid sitting <laughs> on Silver Springs, man, waving yeah, them flags. Yeah, coming, sure off turn, <laughs> come true. coming off turn number four for sure. Oh, yeah, that would, yeah, that'd be great. Uh, Awesome. Thank you, Brian Snyder, for tuning in. Uh, another announcement, the, the Atlantic City Indoor Race is coming up next weekend, Jan January 27th and 28th, Friday, Saturday. Uh, Bert, you went to uh, the Allentown show. That was a great show. It was a great show. Ryan Flores swept the weekend down there. Uh, he's actually, if you guys didn't know this, he's actually Ryan Blaney's uh, right front tire changer. Or front tire changer. Oh, really? Yes. I The Wood Brothers had a uh, thing on their Facebook page this week about he's going for the championship down there at Atlantic City. Well, one, two races. You have um, Eric Rudolph, who is a modified regular up in New York. He won a race, so it's become, between those two. So anything can happen at the Gambler's Classic. And when I talked to Ryan after his win on Saturday night, he said, I can see it in his eyes, he wants that Gambler Classic bad. This race is very prestigious. It's been going on for a while. A couple of years but, you know, this indoor racing, it's different. It really is. I mean, you got to be a true race fan to really appreciate it because there's no really two grooves. Atlantic City, you'll probably see two grooves. But you're basically – Atlantic – or Allentown is a lot on the bottom. But from what I heard, Atlantic City has been worn in with the concrete. Mm -hmm. You're going to get that second groove. And if that happens between Flores and Rudolph, even – uh. Tommy Catalina, who got a very surprised second uh, second place on Saturday in Allentown, plus uh, Showtime Jimmy Blewett. He, you can never count him out in those indoor races. No, you can't. You can't. Have you ever been to an indoor race before, Justin? You no, know, honestly, I haven't. Uh, I've always kind of looked at it as, and, and, I'm, I'm, and it's changed my mind, but I've, I've looked at it as almost like a gimmick thing, yeah. something that keeps you busy in the winter. Exactly. But it seems to have taken on a whole new life of its own. And I mean, these drivers are not there just to knock rust off. They want to oh. win races, and they're taking it serious. It really is. You know, you're getting there's some good paydays here. I mean, you're talking about what was it the slingshots on uh, Friday night down downtown? They paid a, a, what I think a thousand to win down there. That's huge for the slingshots. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. that's and huge. And then you know you got like two grand to win for the you know uh, TQ midgets. Uh, they're only running for less than that. I think when they run outdoor, whether at Wall Stadium or Evergreen or wherever the uh, the American uh, TQ uh, series runs, mm -hmm. you know. So these are big time races for these guys, and these guys get real serious. Plus, you also got a good mix of everyone there. You have like a 
Buck Walter, 600 um, sprint car driver mm-hmm. from down at Linda's in Action Track USA, also ran a modified last year. You have Earl Paulus, who also runs the speeds here at Action Track USA. Uh, who else was in there? There was a couple other guys. We saw Jimmy Blewett. He runs an uh, asphalt modified TQ Midget, dirt modified. Pretty much Jimmy Blewett ran everything back mm-hmm. in the day. So the diversity is so great down there. It's really like – it's almost like the speedsters at Kutztown. You get – everyone from every division in there to race and they just do it for the love of racing absolutely and for us fans we got racing in the dead of winter right city for it not to snow that's probably one thing to ask well for. I, hey, listen i had a conversation with a couple of buddies <laughs> of mine today and i'm telling them we could have raced today hands oh down. my god yes. uh, it was beautiful out but mother nature i'm telling you this is her way of just she's gonna bring us up and right where the icebreaker is, she's gonna. It's ju- always cold. Yep, right. it, she's gonna. And <laughs> she's gonna let go of snow. I'm telling you, as much as I want to go to Lincoln Speedway for the icebreaker, mark my words, I would not be scared. I would not be. You know, I know for one thing. Don't be. Uh, I don't even know what the hell I'm trying to say right now. So would be surprised. If, if would we, not be <laughs> surprised if Williams Grove would be the true icebreaker, and they're the one that kicks off the 2017. Oh, I, I wouldn't doubt it. But I mean, there's there's four things or five things guaranteed in life: death, taxes, money. Well, no, actually, there's four things. Excuse me: death, taxes, uh, snow during motorsports, and snow during Atlantic City. <laughs> yeah. That's a, those but, are the four things in life that are guaranteed. That's true. But the great thing about Atlantic City, I, there's a big old path that goes through all the casinos that leads right up. Oh, so you're not going for the race. You're going for the casino, aren't you? Well, I'm going for a little I mean, bit of both. There's certainly so, something to keep you busy if yeah. uh, there's no race. Oh, going on. trust me. So there's a lot. I think the thing is, the Justin, I think he's trying to win us money here, you know, trying to put back on the show. Hey, That'd be hey, awesome. Man, you want to you want to go win some money? Hey, maybe we can uh, put it back into the sport a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, well uh, or maybe I'll, I'll put a lot of my money back into the sport for the National <laughs> Local Rookie Award. Let me tell you. <laughs> um, yeah. As you were saying, speaking of, you know, we were saying about drivers, the love of love of driving, love of getting the sport. Big name, Tony Stewart announced this week. Yes. 70 plus races on his schedule. Uh, I would not doubt. I know he's already announced some pretty high profile races he's never run before. Could the National Open be one of those races? I think it would be. I think he definitely wants to hit up the National Open. I was uh, listening to a little podcast he was doing on jackslash.com, and he says he has a 410, 360, a modified, a late model, and a TQ. And not to mention, he has a midget. All right, because he wants to run the uh, Anderson Speedway, mm-hmm. that little 100. Got himself a ride in the, uh, the Hoffman 69. That's a for, great for little 500. They won the race last year. Now, the question is, Stuart Haas switched to Ford Racing Motors for this year. The question is, will a Ford be underneath the hood for the 410 Sprint car? You have to think about That's, that contract. You, know, I you can't break a contract. I think it makes sense from, from that standpoint, but I don't know that uh, – I mean – the last time something like that seemed to occur was the I remember Mopar with Carl, yeah. Carl Kinzer. Yeah, uh, I don't know if the sprint car was ready for a Ford motor. The last time I remember there. a driver running a Ford is Todd Gracie. I mean Carmen Perigo, yeah. Silver Spring, That's Silver Spring. Yeah, oh, yeah. But that was actually those sportsmen were named for Fords. You yeah. know, family Ford Mercury off to Carlisle Pike back in the day. But the true only four ten I remember is Todd Gracie. Hell, what about uh, Dave Blaney? He ran a Ford back in the day too, I believe. Yeah, he, way yeah, back, Luna, way back. Casey Luna yeah. car, yep. yeah, number ten. Way Way back in the and day. I believe that's the one he won the World of Outlaw Championship with back in 95, if I'm correct, right? Yeah. The National uh, Nationals. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, or 94, 95. 94, yeah. 20, 94, 95. But it definitely was a Ford. Yes. So the question is, I mean, will it be a Ford underneath the hood or I mean, will it be I Chevy? Remember, I remember, I don't know, I want to say five, ten years ago, I remember uh, when Jack Roush was getting into motors a little mm-hmm. more. He was doing Ford Mustang things. Mm-hmm. I know there was some talk that. He was kind of trying to venture into sprint car racing a little bit. And if I'm not mistaken, I think maybe Jason Johnson uh, in his 360 may have done some tinkering with a Ford. Maybe. I could be wrong, but uh, it's there. Obviously, Tony, if it's going to happen, Tony's the guy to usher into the world of outlaws. And we could see a big change. I don't know what that would do as far as competition goes. I hate to say this, but that's the case. I may have to start looking Don shots. <laughs> but now, if you look in – Well, who he, owns that car? Remember Tony who Stewart, owns exactly. so, you know. It all depends – well, like you said about the contract, but, again, money money talks, bullshit walks. <laughs> so that's you know that's the big thing here. So what's the plan going to be there? But also you were saying about Jack Roush. He has his hands a lot with those Roush 8 motors in late models. Scott Bloomquist, I believe he runs a, a Roush 8 motors. What are they normally? Fords. So yep. Ford definitely has their fingers in late models. Why can't they bring that power plane over this 410 side? Absolutely. All you have to do is just change a couple things and yep. make it a 410 cubic inch, and you're ready to go. Yep. But, I mean, just 
Tony Stewart, he has 70-some dirt races so far on his schedule, and he hasn't really released his uh, dirt track schedule yet. And, I mean, I'm, I'm just so happy he's coming back. Outside a few days from Florida, yeah, I mean, it's been a pretty big mystery. I'm excited to see, especially that four-race weekend for the All-Stars in August. I'm yeah, excited to see you, who, where is he going to put his fingers in. Absolutely. I mean, that's even like even when he got around the Natty Open time. Is he going to run the third classic? He has that opportunity. Well, I don't. Well, I don't know because that's Fort Crown weekend. So he may run Eldora that weekend, or he may just manage his track, run his track exactly that yeah, weekend. We, we know he loves getting in the grader and uh, playing in the mud. So, but you know what sure though? Does. He also loves Susquehanna too. That's he's. Well, he, liked, he ran Stables Grove, too, picked up a win there a few yep. years back. In 360, 360, yep. I guess the real question is here, how many times will we see Tony Stewart right here in the central PA area? I don't know. Let's call him up and ask him. <laughs> yeah, I wish. I think yeah. the one thing that's interesting about Tony is, uh, you know, before he was, he was a NASCAR guy, mm -hmm. and uh, obviously it was interesting to see him come into town. People got excited. You, you get that outside fan who is there to see Tony Stewart. I think more now than ever um, – if they hadn't already, the dirt crowd has accepted Tony as one of their own. Oh, and absolutely! They are so happy to see him back on dirt and doing what he loves. And I, I've not seen a buzz like that in a long time for a driver to make his way back. Truly, you know, during that podcast that Jack Slash did, truly his heart always was lying with dirt track. I mean, he did it. He did his IndyCar career. He did his NASCAR career, which is great. But now he has officially retired from NASCAR. We know that. He still owns cars, you know, in NASCAR. I think he, he's just happy to be back in dirt, and he always had his heart in dirt track racing. Well, you know, as long as he's doing what he loves, I think uh, I think we're going to see a revitalized Tony. I think we're going to see a happy Tony. And when Tony's happy, Tony's hard to beat. So I think oh, yeah. we might see Tony pick up a quite a few wins this year. Quite, the, yeah, go ahead, Bert. By the way, that Bloomquist car is actually Andy Durham, which is still a Ford Motor, and also Bob Fet Fetter Ford with Frankie Kerr as well, too. Yes, good call. That's good. from uh, Scott, uh, Scott uh, was it, Wirick uh, with the, uh, Be uh, Bob Fetter Ford and then Norman Potter with the Bloomquist. So thank you, guys. Well, thank you, Scott, for tuning in. Norman as well. Yeah, Justin. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, right now we're going to uh, give Tyler Bear a little call. He's going to join us. On the show and on the Oaks, yeah, PA, and uh, do a little something with Low Down and Dirty. Tell us about it. Yeah, we uh, the Low Down and Dirty boys. We uh, we're talking about this week. We're gonna do a little program down there, probably around Saturday, around one o'clock. Um, we're not sure what booth we're gonna be in yet. Uh, we got a bunch of offers from a couple people that are gonna let us do it. Um, so we want to thank you guys, whoever we're gonna pick. I'm not sure whoever has electrical power and food. That's the two big <laughs> things that we're gonna find out. So. Um, again, if you're in the area down in Oaks, want to take a little ride down on Friday or Saturday night or even Sunday, it's kids stay down there. Kids under 12 get in for free down there. Uh, $14 to get in. And then um, if you have the little card, they, they give you a little card back at a couple different races. Um, $2 off, so it would be 12 bucks to get in. Uh, Route 422 in Oaks, Pennsylvania, the Philadelphia Convention Center, um, ran by Lance Sammons, who also runs uh, Ariano uh, Racing News. Yeah. So um, it's a great show. Come on down, check it out. Uh, visit Susquehanna's booth. I know they're going to have one. That's where they're going to be releasing their schedule out. Very cool. A bunch of cars going to be down there. I already saw, like I said, the Ramers car down there. I think we're going to see Ryan Smith. I know Greg Hodnett's who rides going to be down there. We're going to see, um, uh, let's see here, Dwayne Howard. I saw his. A lot of cars going to be dis or displayed this weekend. Also, some if you're a racer, come on down. Check some parts out. And, you know, just come on down, have a great time, and, you know, just mingle with the fans. I know there's going to be a lot of interaction. Plus, the king, Richard Petty, Saturday afternoon. Uh, that's awesome. Yeah. You want to meet the king of NASCAR, Richard Petty, that's going to be some. Well, right now, ladies and gentlemen, we have 410 Sprint Car driver Tyler Bear on the line. Tyler, thanks for joining us right here on PA Sprint Car Live. We're doing good, man. Uh, what's going on, bud? How are you? You know, Tyler, you've been in the news lately, buddy. Uh, there's a lot of talk about what car you're going to be in and about this new ride coming forward. Can you tell me a little bit about this new ride you're going to have for 2017? Uh, yeah, it's, um, I uh, have met uh, Mike Vanderbeck and was uh, based out of Knoxville, Iowa, with the same track. And uh, I met him last year. We 
kept talking throughout the fall and then talked a little bit over the winter and decided to come together and uh, start our own team and uh, basically just put our two teams together pretty much, more or less, which is a really, really cool opportunity for me. It's going to open up a lot of, a uh, lot more racing I'll be able to do at different tracks. Um, with it being based out of Knoxville, I'm going to be able to go out there and race there a couple times throughout the year. Definitely plan on hitting the Knoxville Nationals for sure this year. And uh, hopefully we can get out there a couple more times to get my feet wet around that place. And just uh, we're planning on hitting a couple bigger shows around home and stuff, but uh, mainly for Royal and a couple William Grove shows. And um, we'll go from there. Now, obviously, uh, you know, today's sport, it's a very expensive sport. It's uh, And it's always a good sign to see car owners giving getting back into the sport. You know, what, what's it mean to you? Obviously, you're an up-and-coming driver. You, uh, you're a little wet around the ears. What's it mean to you to see somebody like that, you know, get behind you and encourage your career? Uh, it's, it's great, you know. Um, Mike's been in racing out at uh, Knoxville for 20-some years now, between 305s, 360s, and 410s. So, uh, so for somebody like him to be around racing as much and – and know what it takes and have faith in me that we can get it done means an absolute lot and boosts my confidence tremendously, that's for sure. Tyler, you said you're going out to Knoxville this coming year, which is absolutely amazing. Have you ever been out to Knoxville before? Never raced there. I was out there last year for the first time for the Knoxville Nationals, and that was, it's, it's, you got to be there. It's, that's pretty much the only thing I can say about it. It's one of them places. It's like Eldora, and you just you got to be there to experience it. Nothing else gives it credit for what it really is. I mean, it, it, they're top of the notch facilities, and I mean the racing there is just good. The racing is awesome. There's always a top and a bottom. And you can move around the track, and I was just really impressed with with everything, everything. <laughs> Now, Tyler, I know you and I have had a lot of fun in the Port Royal infield, but what's the plan for Port this year? Are we going to be seeing you up there a lot this year before you go traveling? So what's uh, your game plan for up there? Oh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. The team will be based out of Central PA. The, the Knoxville racing is only going to be a couple races out of the year. We're, we're mainly going to be racing in Central PA at Port Royal Speedway. And uh, we'll be there pretty much every weekend, with the exception of maybe a couple races we're going to miss, um, be out at Knoxville. But, uh, yeah, mainly for Royal, and then uh, to hit a couple of the bigger Williams Grove shows and stuff. And I'd like to run the Yellow Breaches races there. And then, of course, all the booth out this year. So we'll just uh, take them one race at a time and see where it goes, you know. Hopefully we get off to a, on the right foot and things start right for us and we can get going again. Now, Tyler, you said you're going to go to the Grove for a couple of big shows and obviously the Yellow Breaches 500. Why do you, I mean, what do you like about the Yellow Breaches 500, to be honest with you? I just think it's cool how they, the teams that most of the time don't get a chance to run up front because you need the right circumstances to happen and stuff and to start up front, and you're not going to start up front every weekend. And it just it, it helps out the, the lower buck teams, I feel, at least a, a little bit. You know what I mean? And, and I'm a big supporter of tracks doing that. Now, obviously, uh, you spend a lot of time up in Bear Hill. I know your friend is with a lot of guys who are probably watching today. But there's also quite a few people who probably don't know a lot about you. Uh, tell us a little bit about how you got started in the sport and just what your background is. Well, yeah, um, when I was about three years old, I went and uh, watched my cousin, now a uh, late model driver, Lindsey Barton, go race a go-kart at Taft Valley Speedway. And when we left, my dad asked me if I wanted to go racing, and I said, yeah, and that's how it started. I've <laughs> uh, been racing ever since then. Uh, we'd, we ran go-karts for quite a few years and stuff, and did a lot of traveling with that race with a lot of really cool people, met a lot of really good people doing that deal, and then uh, I moved to Legend Cars for a couple of years, and then uh, I was going to go late model racing, actually, because uh, my dad, he used to race late models at Port Royal. Late model racing? Route, but then uh, Jim and Sandy 
fine. They were really, really good friends of ours. Talked me into getting into the 305 Sprint Car Division, and then that's pretty much how it happened. That's that's the bet I made right then and there to race sprint cars, and we just kind of taking it one step at a time, moving up slowly, and I'm hoping this year will be the first year we can run all the races we actually plan on racing. We uh, we unfortunately missed two last year due to engine troubles, but, uh, you know, that'll happen from time to time and stuff, but, uh, yeah, hopefully we'll be able to get a, a real full, full year in this year and see what happens. If you're just joining us here on PA Sprint Car Live, we have 410 Sprint Car driver Tyler Bear on the line. Yeah, Tyler, um, Charlotte last year, you know, you went down there. It uh, seemed like you had a lot of fun down there. It seemed like you actually did pretty well. What was your experience like down there at the uh, World Finals? Um, I loved it down there, you know. Um, I'm going to definitely, it was an experience. I learned a lot. I learned so much from day to day. And I really think it showed on the track how much more I progressed. I mean, I was nowhere near on the level I needed to be to, to actually compete down there. But as far as learning, I learned so much. The, the whole facility down there is just amazing. I mean, even with the track being a little wet and rough Saturday night early, they top-notch facility. They came out and graded the track off, and it was a really good race from then on out. And um, I'm hoping this year, hopefully, we're, we're definitely going to go to the finals, and hopefully we'll be able to make uh, the, the spring race down there, hopefully. We'll see what happens with that. And that's a race I'd like to go to, but it's still uh, our schedule is kind of tentative right now. We're, we're still trying to get something together. For sure, 100%, and then uh, we'll go from there. Well, obviously, um, you know, you went down there. Did did you go down there with this year in mind, or was or was this year something that – the plans for this year, was this something that kind of came on on its own, or, you know, was this kind of in the works at the end of last year? <laughs> well, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you how it all started. Um, me and Kevin had been talking – or Kevin had drove for Mike for many years, and Kevin told me about him before we went out to Knoxville and, and talked, and we talked about doing a deal for just the Nationals this year, and uh, I talked to him again in the fall, and I asked him, talked to him about, proposed a deal about what we're doing this year, and and then we, uh, he actually called me Christmas morning. It was, a, it was a good Christmas day if the Ravens would have beat the Steelers that day. I was getting ready to go to the Steelers game, Ravens game, and he gave me a call and told me that we were going to do this, and that's pretty much how it happened. I mean, last year, at no point in time when we were racing did I ever think that anything like this was going to happen for us this coming year. It was a, it was a blessing. And Tyler... Does it, since you're not running your, I feel like Tyler Bear has finally arrived to the 410 Sprint Car scene in Central PA? Oh, I wouldn't quite say that yet. Uh, <laughs> I got a lot of improvement to do yet before I can even call myself an actual racer, in my, in my opinion. I got a lot of improvement to do, that's for sure. But, um, yeah, I hope this year I can progress myself into somewhat of that role and hopefully click off some top tens and top fives against I mean if we can if I can run with these guys in here we can run with anybody in there. And that's how it always is or how how it always was and how it always will be. I feel like Central PA just for some reason we we breed smart car drivers. It's what we do. Now, Tyler, I mean, we probably talked about this before, uh, but you're not just a 410 racer. You are – originally we were in the 305s. How much did the 305s help you when you moved over to the 410s? I love racing 305s. I mean, it's – I had a lot of fun, especially with uh, both Wagners, Logan and Mike Wag, Mikey Wagner the second. Uh, we had a blast racing them things, and they were a lot of fun to race. But as far as getting ready for the 410, I don't really think anything can quite compare you to uh, or prepare you for a 410 spring car. They're kind of just a beast of their own, really, with all the horsepower and the low weight. I mean, even a, believe it or not, a 305 actually weighs more than a 410 spring car. Very cool. Now, this new ride, Tyler, 
how many motors do you have? How many chassis? How many spare parts do you have compared to, you know, your own operation? Uh, well, we, we still have, um, we were able to, Mike has brought a, he's sending me a car from Knoxville in here. So we'll have two to three complete cars. My two motors in here, which I'll be, when I race out of Knoxville, I'll be running, taking one of my motors out there and running in his car. He has a car out there, a new J&J, that uh, we're planning on running this year out there for him. So, I mean, uh, we're doing a lot better than what I would be, but uh, I could definitely be doing a lot better. We're still looking for help and looking for sponsors and stuff, you know, to, to just help get us through the year. Now, obviously, we've been talking a lot about racing extravaganza, about motorsports. What's your, you know, obviously, I'm sure people are going to be excited to see the car. Like, what number are you driving? What's the car going to look like? And, you know, will we maybe see you at racing extravaganza? Uh, as far as the car goes, uh, we're still working on a design for the red car. The white car is going to look exactly the same as what it did last year. Uh, except for instead of number 25, we're going to be racing number 10 this year. And uh, that'll change that car, but we're still waiting for a design. And uh, as soon as that gets finalized and stuff, I'll have pictures up for everybody to see and everything. But uh, as far as any of the racing extravaganzas go and stuff, uh, I'm, I think I'm going to show up one of the days. But as far as our cars being there, uh, they're not going to make it this year, unfortunately. That's all right. Now, you're going to be at Port Royal pretty regularly this season. And you do, like you said, you pretty much made every show, uh, every feature event last year except for two, and you said they were motor problems. For this year's schedule, what is maybe one of the races that really sticks out to you that you absolutely want to get the W? Oh, uh, that would, I mean, it, it's uh, it's really nice. Uh, top floor fifth is really comes to mind for me, and when it comes to Port Royal racing, I mean, I I grew up at Port Royal. I mean, my dad used to run a push truck at Port Royal. Used to be on the track, so uh, I spent a lot of time there and watched a lot of a lot of legends in sprint car racing when the top floor fifty, and uh, that one, especially now, there's a uh, fifty thousand dollar race to even be bought. But uh, that race there, it could be zero dollars, and I'd still want to win it just as bad as anything else more than anything else because of just the prestige of that race and Heath Kaufman, Lance Lee. I mean, if, if you're good, you won that race, that's for sure. Now, they bumped it up, obviously, to $50,000. Money in racing, shocker, I know. Um, do you think maybe <laughs> Do you think maybe they could have put more money throughout the field and just kept, you know, at twelve grand or whatever it was to win and, and just up through, you know, second through 24th? You know, um, it'll be a thing that they'll just have to work with, you know, and uh, we'll see how this year works out. I haven't uh, seen a full payout of the Tough Score 50. I don't know uh, what the payout's going to be like back through the field, but, uh, you know, um, most of them top dollar races, uh, the winner gets most of the profit when it comes to that deal, and uh, that just seems to be how it is. But you know what, when you're when it's like that, you're, you're racing against the best. You're going to have the best sprint car drivers from, mm -hmm. from anywhere – they're racing uh, as long as the outlaws and stuff, you know, they they probably won't come in. And if the all stars have a race, there's a couple and stuff like that. They'll they'll all be in there, I believe, at Port Royal Racing. It'll it'll oh. definitely be whoever wins that race will be a hell of a driver, that's for sure. Oh, okay. That that piques my interest now, Tyler. Now, uh, of course, we're we're talking about the uh, Tusk Score Fifty here, but what are a race on your schedule right now is kind of piquing your interest that you're looking forward to outside the the fifty? Oh, well, definitely the the Nationals in Knoxville. I mean, uh, that race there, just being there last year and watching everything, watching the whole event, being there every day. You know, the, that race definitely is a big big circle on my schedule this year. And uh, I'm hoping that we get out there a couple times before the Nationals and run a couple races and stuff. And that way I can get my feet wet around that place and hopefully be able to contend for Rookie of the Year for Knoxville next, uh, for the Knoxville Nationals next year.
Now, that Saturday before the Capitani Classic, because usually a lot of drivers like to use the Capitani Classic on that Sunday for a test session, is there a big race at Port Royal, maybe like the Dream, that you want to run, but then you're going to absolutely halt? Is that on your mind? Uh, it's a possibility, but, um, you know, uh, we're, we're going to play it by ear right now. We're still uh, trying to iron out all the details and stuff. But uh, it's definitely, I definitely looked at it and seen that on the schedule, seen that conflict. But, uh, you know, uh, I don't want to miss the dream race. I know that I'll definitely be a poor role for that, for sure. But, you know, and uh, there's a couple races earlier in the year that could be missed that wouldn't hurt us that are just regular nights at Port Royal that we could go out to Knoxville and get some laps around there before before that. So that might be our better better option of the two. Now, what about, like, um, say, the Grove or Lincoln A? Uh, well, I know you said about the Grove, but what about Lincoln A? Thoughts on maybe going out to Lincoln a couple times this year? Uh, you know, with the I, – I like Lincoln, you know. Um, I just live so close to Port Royal that it's all but uneconomical for me to try and make Sports not racing because those are going to be nights that I want to go out to Knoxville and run. That way it's not hurt, hurt me too bad in points at the Port Royal. But, uh, you know, uh, come later in the year when racing is dwindling down and stuff, then I do put on, on races you brand and stuff. We might try and get down there and get a race or two around Lincoln. Very nice. And we do have a fan question here. Uh, Patrick uh, Flafferty asks, uh, how's it feel driving a 410 for the first time at Port Royal? <laughs> well, I, I've never actually been in a drag car before, like in a car drag car, but I could imagine that that's about what it feels like the first time you step on the gas, like step on the throttle wide open at Port Royal. And then once you finally build your momentum up, it's, it's basically you hold your breath for a couple seconds, getting into the corner, and then there you see it. Next corner, hold your breath just a little bit. And, but uh, it's it's a rush and it's a it's a challenge and that's what makes it fun and that's what makes everybody come and watch us and watch us do our thing. We're running right on the edge and it's 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 exhilarating. Is about all you can say. Help you out, you know your sponsors and all. That. I know you got a ton of people you wanna you gotta thank for helping you out. Oh. I for sure uh, we got uh, Cockrell's auto body they help us out a lot which uh, I'm sorry that uh, turned to Perry Automotive Collision I, I apologize about that we had a sponsor change names on this and I'm just uh, getting acclimated sorry about that we'll, we'll, we'll but, let uh, you slide Tyler yeah uh, <laughs> yeah we'll let you slide on that yeah, one bud Swans, uh, they help us out quite a bit you know keeping my hair cut Keeping me looking good. <laughs> and, uh, I won't go that far, bud. We yeah. <laughs> Full test debating. Full test debating helps me out quite a bit. My, they do a good job for us. And, uh, and that's about it. And, and obviously, uh, Bert was telling us a story earlier here today. He said apparently last year he backed into your car out in the parking lot at Williams Grove. Maybe he should uh, bring some insurance money to the uh, to the deal. Yeah, I probably should throw something in there for you. <laughs> oh, that was just a situation of being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Yeah, don't have a black I car anymore. It wouldn't matter. It's just an accident. It's the way it goes, you know. Everybody has no big deal. Yeah. <laughs> I will say this about Tyler. He did do a great job when we had our uh, uh, World of Outlaws tournament up at uh, – one Tree Hill up at the West Havers camp at the Grove there. Uh, him and uh, Brad Clear went out for the uh, final round there. And I know, I forget, I think it was you that got screwed because you got, you got involved in that big one down the backstretch there, and your car wrecked. Brad kept going, if I'm right. Yeah, I, I remember that quite well, actually. I, you know, I'm a pretty competitive person. It's uh, something I've always been since I was younger. I never liked to lose, not even at anything. But, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, we were getting ready to pass him down the tax stretch, and there was a big melee, and that's the way it goes, I guess. I guess it just wasn't in my favor to win that day. No, it wasn't, but I tell you what, we did raise a good bit of money for Jake Waters, and that was all that matters there, and that was a lot of fun to have you up there, and uh, we hope to see, uh, you know, if we're definitely going to have him again this year, so I imagine you're probably going to be an early entry for this, aren't you? 
Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And uh, I, I got to thank uh, my biggest sponsor as well this year, uh, the VFW Post 34. Those guys down there, they do a lot for the veterans and stuff, and uh, they've helped me out quite a bit the past two years. And uh, I'm real proud to have them on our car and uh, help veterans out. And as a lot of people know, I'm my good friend Justin Snyder was a good veteran was a good uh, veteran and stuff, and we've been able to do some things for him and help him and his family out. And we got the big race in Susquehanna this year, the Justin Snyder Memorial, salute to the troops. So, and that's an all-star race, so that'll be a good race to get to this year for sure. Well, Tyler, we thank you for coming on the show, and good luck in 2017. All right, thank you. Have a good night, guys. All right, see you, bud. Take care. Tyler Bear joining us. Uh, boys, he sounds excited. He wants to get it going. He is. I tell you what, Tyler is such a great kid. You know, I've got the pleasure to meet him uh, at the uh, at the race night that he had down in Quaker Shake and Lube, and I got to know him a little bit, and then throughout the rest of the year. Uh, such a great kid, you know, talk to. Such a great young talent uh, for the 410s, and I see some really big things coming with him. They get everything in the right place. Tyler Bear could be in victory lane, if not this year, maybe next year. Absolutely. Who would have thought late model would have came out of that boy's mouth? <laughs> uh, yeah, I was a little surprised there. I didn't, I didn't I'll tell you what, we, we love having Tyler up on the hill. We love spending time with him. He's a, he's a great kid, and uh, we've gotten to know him pretty well, but I can't say that I won't be excited to – Instead of seeing him next to us on the hills, watching him on the track. I think that's, oh my God, it's yes. going to be great for him. It's going to be great for the sport. You know, another young driver coming through this Pennsylvania pipeline. Yeah. So, and plus, uh, that gives me less of a chance back into his car again. That does. Yeah, thanks for bringing that up, buddy. I appreciate that. Uh, um, it, it is good that, you know, with this car, he's just not going to race at Port Royal. He's going to, you know, broaden his horizons, if you will. He's going to go to the Grove you know, run the Yellow Breaches 500 and some other special shows there. He's going out to Knoxville, the granddaddy of them all. It's definitely going to be a learning experience. Yeah, I mean, it's an opportunity of a lifetime. I think even as just a fan, you know, any fan, any driver, you know, I think your dream has to be to get to the Knoxville Nationals. You can almost say you've arrived. Whether or not you win, whether or not you qualify, I mean, that's the thing. You know, we've seen Logan Wagner go out there a couple times the past couple of years, you know, to run competitive, but also just to say you've run Knoxville. I mean, some of the best drivers to ever come to the sport have flourished and run Knoxville, and I think that's got to be. He is the first 410 sprint car driver we had on this show for this year. Yeah, it's exciting. Uh, you know, if if talks like that and news like that is, is what we have to look forward to for the rest of the year, I think 2017 here at PA Sprint Car Live is going to be a very exciting year. We want to know what you fans think about the – we have drivers on, especially the Tyler Bear interview we definitely opened the comments uh eight o'clock uh p.m we want to know what you fans thought about the interview and we definitely thank all of you for joining in well but we already do got some comments about an interview uh john uh kylie says great interview uh norman potter um he says i've been practicing for the ps we're getting some really positive feedback so far from whatever uh uh from that interview with tyler so thank you guys again for watching He's in somebody's car. Do you think maybe he can lean on that equipment more than maybe conservative mode with his other equipment, his own equipment? I mean, I think he could push it a little harder, obviously. I mean, I'm not an owner. I'm not a driver. I don't know what's going on down there in the pits many nights. I'm sure but, the owner doesn't want to hear me but, say that you know, right now. Hey, it's, you know, I, I think it'll be conservative. Obviously, you don't want to burn your stuff up early because, you know, I don't care how many motors you have. If you blow them up in the first month of the season, it's going to be a long year. Yeah. So yeah. I think, um, you know, for a kid like that, obviously, like I said, opportunity of a lifetime. And I think he sh is going to take it and grab it by the horns. And, uh, you know, I, I think we'll see 2017. Well, we're going to dial R Ryan Linder up here from X1 Race Cars. He's going to have a little story for us to tell, and that's going to be a great inter interview. But like, I'm going to come back to what Tyler Bear is saying about late model. Who ever thought he had dreams of running a late model also? Well, I mean, you know, it's kind of the diversity of the sport, you know, seeing what it's all, what it's all about. You know, when you go from – well, it all starts like for me – I will, like, I'm using me as an example. It started back with NASCAR. I started watching NASCAR back when I was younger, and it got me in the dirt then. Yeah. So then, like him, it took late mall. So any way you can get into it, it don't matter what got you into it, what you're doing now and it's with the 410s. And, like, he's going to do a really good job, I think, with this new team, with this Knoxville team. And, like I said, I think there's a good chance he could be rookie of the year. I mean, there's going to be a lot of people out there, a lot of drivers. But that um, 
National Open Rookie of the Year. It sounds like he's got some peak interest into that, too. Absolutely. He sounded like, you know, he's – I don't think he ran any race at the Grove last no, year. No, he I, did not. Okay. I think the only race he ran outside of Port Royal was Charlotte and Susquehanna. If I'm, if I'm correct here now, I'm not going to, um, you know, speculate on that. But I believe those are the only two races that he ran outside of Port. So it's going to be interesting to see him travel around. Like I said, Tyler's a great guy. I know we parted with him on the hill a couple times. And I think it's great to see that he's, gonna be, that he's got this opportunity. And hopefully he's going to capitalize on it. Right now, ladies and gentlemen, we have Ryan Linder, the owner of X1 Race Cars, right here on PA Sprint Car Live. Ryan, thank you for taking some time and joining us on the show. Uh, thanks for having me on. What uh, brought on this big move? You are literally going from one uh, coast to the other coast. What brought this on, my man? <laughs> uh, I got tired of shifting my car to that side of the country. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to put those things on power to my them, so I just figured I'd get back there and do it. Well, obviously, uh, you know, I know some of the Central PA fans got used to your name a little bit in the last year or so. Uh, I know you did some stuff with Ryan Smith. You know, tell us a little bit about your racing background and what got you into building sprint cars. Um, it's actually uh, kind of like, like Tyler's there. Um, when I was a kid, I started going to dirt late model races. My, my cousin raced late model, so when I was four or five years old, I started doing that, and um, – you know, and one, one night, he, he drove a truck for a guy named Art Went. They used to run the All-Star deal, you know, with uh, his own car, 77, and Joey Saldana drove for him for a while. But they uh, they brought his car out one night to do, uh, like, an exhibition. It was the first time I ever saw a, a sprint car. And uh, I thought, man, that, that's probably the coolest damn thing I've ever seen. It's, you know, I've just been out racing, you know, my, my whole life. And moved down to Indianapolis when I was 18, started working in race car shops. And, you know. Now, Ryan, I mean, you seem like a, a pretty young guy here. Um, are you surprised at the success you've been having with your X1 chassis? Because it seems like they're working very well, especially with Ryan Smith. Yeah, you know, it's, it's a good deal I got with Ryan there. And, and Jason Barney was the one that actually really got me going, you know, when I first started building cars. I got one to Jason up there in New York. And, you know, the big thing is just um, – we all communicate pretty well, and, and I built you guys trying a couple of different things here and there, and just the communication, being able to kind of build a consistent car, and, you know, let's try this, and, you know, the back and forth is huge with these guys, and the, the communication that we have is key. Now, I, I talked to a few people. I talked to Todd, Lieto, and uh, Ryan, and guys, and – they all raved and raved about your welds. I, they, that's what they kept telling me. You're a master welder. What? What is it? You know, yeah. what's different about your chassis and what you do that maybe you know would make drivers want to you know move to your equipment in Central PA? Um, you know, I, I pay really close attention to the, the details. I want every car to be the same. I weld every car myself right now. You know, it's, it's killing me because I don't have uh, that much time, but. You know, I, I take so much pride in my work that I really don't ever let anything slide. You know, I want it to be as good as I can make it. So I, I pay really close attention to the materials that I use. You know, I don't buy the cheapest chrome molly out there. I buy the best stuff I can find and, and um, just take a lot of time in my production. And I think I have a, you know, as good a product as anybody, you know, better than a lot of them just, just because of the attention to detail that, that I have. Live. We have Ryan Linder on the line, uh, owner of X1 Race Cars. Uh, Going to talk to him to see what his 2017 plans are. Ryan, back to building chassis. Do you think a lot about safety and innovation when you build your cars? Uh, you do, you know, because and that's one thing, you know, when guys like Ryan Smith and Jason and Matt Tanner and these guys, I mean, they all get to be my friends, you know. So I don't build a ton of cars, but anything pretty close to the guys that do, so – when it's, you know, either either my ass or one of my friends, you know, sitting in these cars, they're like, yeah, I, I want to do everything I can do to make sure this is safe, you know. So if, if God forbid anything happens, I don't have to go to bed at night wondering, you know, yeah, I wish I, I would have taken more time to roll that car. I wish I would have fit it better. It's like I want to do the best I can. And, and on the innovation side of it, it's, it's a, a tricky one there. I've tried a bunch of different things. But the problem is when you start dealing with a lot of these guys that, that uh, they make their living racing, you know, they can't afford to take three, four, five weeks to try and do something new. You know, it might be a little bit better. You know, they're trying to make a living. They need to win races. They need to stay up in points. So, you know, these guys refine these cars so far that, you know, they got a real small
a box for work and they don't like to get out of it. You know, they, they want, they, they know what they like and they want that. Now, Ryan, how many X1 chassis are there out right now that are currently racing in, uh, well, across the country, really? Uh, oh, man. Um, Sorry, I'm making you think here, bud. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, I mean, not a lot of them. I'm, I'm honestly, you know, um, maybe, uh, you know, this last year, I um, got, uh, this is the biggest win I've ever had. You know, I'm, I'm taking on, uh, you know, a handful of new customers. I've got more cars to build for existing customers. Uh, you know, I'm, it seems like everybody's doing great cars that we need because I was running out of time. But this year, you know, I managed to definitely get myself a new car. So right now, we can build a couple more as we go. But um, things are really taking off right now. And, and it's just a matter of trying to keep up with everything. Now, obviously, when you make a decision like this, I know it's not all – It's and obviously, a lot of it's about the business and being able to get bigger. But I, I believe I saw you, you posted a little bit about your wife being behind you. You know, what she think about moving across the country for sprint car racing? Uh, you know what? I think they're giving up on me having any kind of real common sense, to be honest with you. She <laughs> probably wants uh, a little more time for herself. I don't know. But she, you know, to her credit, you know, she wasn't around racing when she met me. I'm she sees how hard I work at it, and she just wants to see me succeed. So, I mean, that's probably why we're still married, for one. But, um, you know, it's not, not easy to be married to me, I'll tell you that. Uh, but I, I, couldn't, I, I couldn't have done better there. And the good thing is, she's uh, got her own business. You know, she's an accountant, has her own um, accounting business. So, part of the summer, you know, she can work from there. So, she'll spend a couple weeks back there with me and come back here for a couple weeks. And, and, uh, and hopefully everything will work out for the best. You know, I'm, I'm pretty positive about it. It's just... Uh, you know, I'm kind of flying without a net right now. Hopefully this all works out and I got some great people, you know, pulling this deal together for me. And, and um, I just got to think, like, you know, when we start talking about this, you know, with Ryan the guys and, you know, like, yeah, maybe we can move out there. Maybe we can do something part-time. And, you know, Jeremy Bittner is Ryan's crew chief, you know, said, yeah, he found me a shop. Maybe I'll move everything out there. Well, he finds a shop and, and Todd's working deals for me and Ryan's working deals and everything. Like, you know, I just, I got to do it. You know, you got to make that. Whenever I see on Facebook his wife leaves and his survival, I, I love those. I'm dying at the, some of the things that he does on the survival when his uh, wife goes on uh, trips or something like that. <laughs> well, Ryan, when you hear of Central PA 410 racing, what do you think of? Is Do you think that is truly the hotbed in the country that you need to get your name out there? Um, you know, that's, that, that's where, uh, that's where everybody follows, you know, and the thing is, you know, if you can make it there, you know, you, you can make it anywhere. I mean, that, that is the toughest racing, and, and that's why you see, uh, whether it's the All-Stars, the Outlaws, or whatever, you know, when they come into Central PA, they know that they got a fight in their hands, you know, mm -hmm. and you see it every year, you know, those guys, you know, Posse guys, you know, they, they, you know, usually there's split it with them or they, they win the majority of those races because it's just so tough. Yeah, the press release, a lot of talk's been about, you know, Ryan Linder, the chassis builder. But I know you, you, you know, you're no stranger to sitting behind a car as well. So what's your racing schedule look like in Central PA for 2017 along with this? You know, and, and we, we haven't really figured it all out yet. Um, that's the one good thing about PA Jones look at a schedule. You know, I can just show up there and know there's races all over the place. So, um, you know, we, we're kind of, we got a, a couple four tens now. I might run some 360 stuff. Um, you know, I'm pretty much going all in. And, and uh, you know, that's the, one of the big reasons I wanted to move there is I know that um, no matter what happens, I'm going to come out of there a better racer. I'm going to come out of there a better race car builder. You know, I'll, I'll be able to communicate better with customers. We're going to have a lot more experience, a lot more um, resources to draw on when you get to race that much. Now, what does your schedule – have you planned a racing schedule this year for the Central PA, or are you going to kind of do like an outlaw schedule here in Pennsylvania, just hit or miss tracks, or are you going to possibly go somewhere on a regular basis? You know, I'm thinking I'm just going to follow Ryan, Ryan Smith around for every week. So <laughs> <laughs> we're going to kind of team up a little bit this year and, and, that, and share information. And, you know, that's, you know working with, with Jeremy there, um, you know, as Ryan's crew chief, I'll be able to, one, work off of their notebook, which will accelerate my learning curve a lot. And 
you know, and hopefully I can give those guys feedback. It'll be nice. Maybe we try two different things, you know, one each car, you know, and kind of accelerate the development of what we're doing in these cars. And maybe hopefully as the year goes on, we can, we can add some new customers out there, get some more guys in these cars and really start to build this thing up. Now, Ryan, uh, you did hit on there that you you were pretty much in Ryan Smith uh, 358 this past year. Talk about that a little bit. I mean, how did that kind of pique your interest in saying, hey, you know, I want to kind of move out here to Pennsylvania and try and raise some of these boys here on a regular basis? And also, does that mean we might see you in a 410 now that you're going to be out closer here? Yeah, yeah. Actually, you know, we're going to run some 410 stuff for sure. And, and um, you know, the 358 deal, Todd was the one that talked me into it. He called me on like a Monday or Tuesday or something like that, and said, hey, if you can get out here this weekend, you can run the 358. And I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm going to fly across the country to run a run race, you know, a bunch of guys that are going to clean my clock, you know, but <laughs> you really need to do it. So, so you know, we got a plane ticket, went out there, and and actually, um, you know, we ran pretty good that night, you know, I think we, we probably had a shot to win that race, but uh, the wing post broke and locked the wing all the way forward, so when the track slipped up, we, we couldn't get it back, you know, and, and at the end of the year, we came out and ran one four ten race in one of Ryan's cars, and uh, you know, just had an untested motor in there and had some issues right off the bat, and just qualifying and just missed a heat race or a practice there, and and then it almost qualified for the race out of the B still, but um, you know, it was it was pretty, you know, when you know when you're in the, you, you can tell the difference, you know, that four ten deal, it's uh, it's there's some some hitters out there, man. There's just no way around it. There's the best race car in the country. Right now, fans, if you want to ask uh, Ryan Linder a question, we're going to open up the comment section to you. Justin, go ahead. Well, obviously, like you said, I, um, I, you got familiar. You ran uh, Susquehanna there at the end of the year. Obviously, like you said, there's a lot of tracks here in Central PA. Is there anything that maybe is comparable to what you've been running out west? Uh, you know, not, not really. I mean, it, it's um, – you know, the, the dirt's different. It's, it's hard to compare apples to apples because, you know, out here it gets so hot in the summer. It's hard to keep any real moisture in your track. We usually end up on, on dry slickies here. But, and all your tracks back there are a lot bigger, you know. Um, you know, I, I think you and Coco Pot Speedway, it's, it's not far off of Susquehanna. Um, got a little bit longer corners there, but it's fairly long straightaway. So, like, Williams Grove and Lincoln, places like that, there's, you know, those are one of a kind. You know, there's nothing around here compared to those. When somebody says... You're going to race at Williams Grove Speedway, and we all know the history behind the place. It's very prestige. What do you think about what's the first thing that comes to mind when somebody says you're going to race at Williams Grove Speedway? Oh, man, it, it, uh, it's a little, little pucker factor there, you know, but when you, when you get down to it, um, it's another race track. Everybody that's ever raced there had to race there for the first time at one point, you know, and you just get in it and you do it, you know. You, you, I got confidence in, in my equipment, and, and I got confidence in the guys I'm working with, with, with Ryan and Jeremy. And it's going to be better than I am, and I got to I got to catch up to that car because I know what it's capable of. And that's a you know that's why hard on on anybody else who's showing up there for the first time. Is there any race uh, that? When you knew you were moving out of Pennsylvania, is there any race that you circle on your calendar saying that I want to race this race in that 94 work or, work or car? Is there any particular race that you're going to go to? Uh, you know, I mean, I'm sure we're going to hit hit the big ones. You know, we're going to do the Tuscarora 50. I'm sure we'll do that. And then, you know, the National Open probably. And, um, you know, there, I wouldn't say there's any one race. You know, there's there's so many so many good ones back there, you know, and, it's just hard to, to pick anything out. You just you just go where they're at, you know, and, and I know Ryan's going to hit the big ones, and I'll, I'll be right there with him. Now, speaking of the National Open, there's a little award <laughs> that uh, we get together. Bear Hill Gang presents it. It's called the National Open Rookie Award. We're going to try to up the purse a little bit for that. We're going to try to uh, pay $2,500 to the best rookie uh, for the National Open. Do you think uh, that's going to entice you to absolutely run the National Open and try your hardest? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, there's another work for that, man. I'll be, uh, I'll be all over that. But <laughs> uh, I think he just wants to go park the car for the weekend and set up on beer here with you guys. <laughs> well, you can do that, too. stories about that place, you know? Hey, you can do that, too. Hey, won't pay 2500 though. You're more than welcome, and uh, you got to bring beer, though. So. <laughs> yeah, I actually, you know, one of my good friends out here is uh, Buck Buckley, you know, the chassis builder. He's from PA, you know. 
raced out there for, for many years. So, you know, I got to hear a lot of, a lot of pretty good stories, you know, about, you know, seventies and eighties and, you know, some, some, some pretty interesting stuff we probably shouldn't uh, repeat on, <laughs> on the family show. But, uh, I just I can't wait to see that stuff. You know, I mean, it's it's uh, it's pretty awesome. You know. Now, obviously, you've, I mean, I don't know if you've noticed, but the fan reaction seems you, you've kind of blown up our uh, our Twitter and our Facebook here the last couple of days. Obviously, a lot of things have already been announced, but this kind of came out of left field almost in a way. How you know? How have the fans treated you? Obviously, you're a bit of an outsider, but. I, you know, come National Open, I'm sure you'll be a certified member of the Pennsylvania Posse. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I I can't say enough about the fans in PA, and I was actually blown away. I mean, and you know, I'm sitting there thinking the whole time, I said, why do these people care about some some dude that rolled in here from the desert for the weekend? You know, <laughs> and, and um, you know, a cool story is, uh, you know, when I worked at East back in the late '90s, um, a kid came to work there from PA named Derek Snyder, and we got to be pretty good friends and. You know, out of the blue, you know, when I made the announcement I was going to run the 358 last year, his brother Justin contacted me, you know, and, and really wanted to meet me. And, we, you know, we spent some time there that race, you know, I mean, we, we lost Justin last year, which was, was pretty devastating. But I couldn't believe it. This guy reached out to me. We, you know, I, I got to meet him and, you know, a few other of your crowd there before the race. And I thought, man, this is, this is the coolest thing. I, I felt like I was at home, you know, and there you know anyway, that's really cool seeing how deep the Snyder's relationship goes with you know almost every 410 team out here and I know that you're probably gonna would say that now that just Snyder's loses the troop race at Susquehanna for the Arctic at all-star circuit of champions that's probably gonna have a little bit of special meaning to you now this year won't it Sorry, kind of broke up there. I missed that question. Gotcha. Uh, the uh, with uh, you know, with the Snyders seem like they're so close to almost every four ten team there is out here. I guess you know, with you knowing the Snyders and that, that is probably gonna mean a lot to you that you get a chance now to race the Articat uh, All Star Circuit of Champion race, which is a just Snyder salute to the troops of Susquehanna here. I mean, that's gotta be pretty special. To you. you get a chance to run that race. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely gonna be a highlight. I mean, I'm still, uh, you know, I'm still in touch with, with his, you know, some of his buddies there, you know, on Facebook and. Derek, you know, we still uh, kind of stay in touch a little bit. And I told him, he was one of the first guys I told that I was going to head back there before we kind of made any real announcement. He was, he was pretty excited about it. And it's just, uh, you know, it, it's, it's nice to, you know, the racing community, it's, it's spread out across this whole country, but it's still pretty small when you get down to it. And, and that's, that's, you know, what's great about this sport and the, the grassroots of this sport, you know, with, with sprint car racing. Well, uh, we got some fans here watching. Uh, Bert, do we got any uh, questions here for Ryan? Well, I got one comment here from Amanda Whitney saying, no more free alcohol from the Linder camp. Uh, <laughs> Andy Eatwell goes, sure hate to see uh, you leave the Arizona area. So it seems like you're really going to be, you know, missed from out in Arizona. But, I mean, this is a huge opportunity for you to come out to PA, Ryan. <laughs> Sorry, kind of, I missed that last part again there. It broke up there. So, you know, it's, I've gotten a lot of great feedback from this deal and a lot of encouragement from, from people. But I'm going to do it anyway, and it's pretty cool to see a lot of people get behind it and, and give you some support and stuff like that. So. Thank you, Ryan, for uh, being on the show, and I definitely can't wait to catch up with you in the pit area. And don't forget that we're going to do live pre-race shows at some of the big uh, races, and uh, we can't wait to have you on again, brother. Uh, anytime, man. It's been an honor, and I appreciate you guys calling. Thank you. Yeah, and uh, thanks for uh, – I, obviously, I know you said you were tuning in earlier today, too, so thanks for tuning in and, uh, you know, spreading the show uh, to a little bit of the, you know, western side of the world. All right, I appreciate it, guys. Thanks, Ryan. Ryan Linder joining us, owner of X1 Race Cars. He sounds pumped. He 94 work of, well, if it is a 94 work of car, um, it's going to be really exciting to see, you know, what he's able to do out here. I mean, it's always cool, obviously. It, I mean, we've talked about it throughout the year, but, you know, we've we've got such a wide variety of drivers coming to PA this year. You've got the Sabi Vet and Dale Blaney. You've got, you know, the guy kind of making his name, and um, uh, a guy coming in here with a new chassis who is really wet to 410 racing. So we've got a little bit of everything, and they're all coming to PA to do it. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's going to be really interesting, too, because you saw, I think we touched on this earlier or last week's show, Rico Abreu now is out of a NASCAR ride. So what's he going to do? Is he going to come out east, And which I think he might? So, you know, there's so many possibilities. And you got Smoke, too. What's he going to do? And then also Bl- the Blaney brothers. Yeah, we got, you know, Dale for sure in Pennsylvania. But what about Dave? What's he going to do? When's he going to show up here? So, you know, it's everyone wants to run Pennsylvania, and it's such a great thing right now for this sport. Absolutely. Central PA always is and always will be the hotbed for 410 sprint car and, racing. And I believe I saw – I don't know if it's associated with the Lincoln race, but – I think the Dirt Classic this year. Oh, up the yes. From the back a little bit. 1,200 yep. to start, I believe I saw. A, a thou- no, just 1,000 to start. 1,000 to start. That's, you had, we had some big heavy hitters come in for that show last year. They upped the purse like that. I, I can only imagine that it's going to get bigger. Now, the question is, where do you go that weekend? Or Do you run All-Stars or do you run Lincoln? Do you go to Eldora or Lincoln? I think now they're trying to pull people away from Eldora. I think this might just do it. But then, see, that's what makes me mad. The tracks we got to learn. I mean, they're two big shows. Oh yeah, huge. Yeah, we got to learn how to work together. There should be no reason why one track's having the All Stars and the other track is running the dirt track qualifier. There should be no reason. Well, for I mean, that. last year we had we had a case where a lot of guys wanted to come in, and we had a busy weekend that mm-hmm. week. There was, I think, three or four races. Yeah, in well, Pennsylvania it was four, yeah, it was four races right scheduled, out, and there were some guys that were like, you know, I'm only going to hit Williams Grove and this race because travel wise, I'm going to miss a race back home as well. So. You know, I know it's tough to to compare uh, an Eastern schedule to something out West and say, how do these work together? But if we want drivers to come in that haven't been here, then something's got to happen. And plus the thing is, too, you also have the commitments, too, with the All-Star, especially that, the Dirt Classic weekend because that's Four Crown weekend. That's an All-Star race. Yeah. So yeah. you have those commitments there for those drivers. And in, it's tough to get the World of Outlaw drivers in, too. I mean, they're a lot looser than what, say, like Dirt Car is for their, you know, Super mm-hmm. Dirt Cars because we saw Shane Stewart – uh, come in a couple years ago for the Dirt Classic, and I forget there was a couple other outlaws. I think rolled it, um, or no, was it um, Swindell too? I think he was still running the outlaws too, and he rolled in too under that schedule. So really, yeah. it all depends on you know it, how cl- how tight you are in that points championship too. I think in the All Stars at that point. That's another name to think about too. Sammy Swindell, what's he doing? Uh, you know, yep. Kevin Thomas Jr. is getting behind the the Blazing Race in '82 mm-hmm. this year, going up to the win class. Uh, what's Sammy doing? Are we going to see Sammy back? I'm sure Sammy's not done racing. No. Sammy's not done until Sammy says he's done. That's true. But even then, you know, where's, trust where's Sammy going to be? May- Wild card, Highlands car? Oh, oh. man. <laughs> Let's start that rumor. He'll be the driver of the Highlands number three right here in the central PA area. Isn't Only it, time will tell. Isn't there like 20 rumors already about that car? Oh, going there's around? so many rumors. Oh. People asking me, I don't know what's really going on. <laughs> I don't think anyone knows. You know, maybe the car is going to be entered in that uh, racing extravaganza, and you can see the driver's name on the side. Who knows? Well, that did happen a couple years at Motorsport. Evan and Frank Coase was on the hood there, so uh, you <laughs> that's know, one way of breaking the news. Oh yeah, you know, you go out, you win the guy fifty grand, then oh by the way, you're out of the car next year. So <laughs> thanks, thanks for nothing. Uh, but there is one new ride we do know about. Robert Bell got a new ride this weekend. Yes, yes, and Cole Pass Comet. Yes, uh, Robert. Yeah, uh, I tell you what, the one thing I, I, you know, everyone, if you're familiar with sprint car racing, you know Robert Bell's story. You know he's kind of the low budget guy, shoestring, still out there traveling. And it's very refreshing to know that it's not all. He's going to get a shot. He's going to get some a little bit of support behind him. Mm-hmm. And I think that's really cool. Uh, I'm sure the guy, he can't be any more humbled, and I'm sure he's excited. He definitely opened up a lot of people's eyes when he got that heat win at the Chili Bowl. Yeah, he went out in $600 motor. I mean, yeah. But- and he posts a picture of the car sitting on an open trailer in a Walmart parking lot. Yeah, in the lot. rain. I mean, in the rain. Yeah, Driver in seat. the so, rain. I mean, that's dedication if I've ever seen it. That's a, little, that's a great throwback to times that don't really exist anymore in sprint car racing. Yeah, I mean, when, they, uh, when I saw them do the interview after his heat race, when he popped out of the top of that roll cage like he just won $100,000, <laughs> it was crazy. Kyle Larson was coming over, shaking his hand, giving a hug. Rico Abreu. You know, they were all there. They got one big group photo, which Lawrence I was. Lawrence Stewart, too. Yeah, Lawrence Stewart was there. He, uh, Robert Bell had a Brian Clausen shirt on, which was pretty cool. And you know what? That just shows how deep friendships really go in uh, dirt track racing. Yeah, it's, it's, just, it's really cool. I mean, Pennsylvania is a place where that still happens, where we still see those guys who are coming in. Because other than the top 10 cars, I, you know, the top 8 to 10 drivers from the cars, the rest of the field are guys just trying to make features, trying to mm-hmm. – Grab a win, and you know they're not doing it for money; they're doing it because they love it, and that's what sprint car racing is all about. 
Yeah, it's going to be uh, DKM uh, Motors, or sorry, uh, what is it here? DK Motorsports, um, base are out of, um, I'm not sure where they're based out of here, but they are going to be running uh, Winter Dirt Games for the USAC Amsoil National Sprint Cars February 23rd through the 25th at uh, Bubba Raceway Park. And then they're also going to run some uh, Luke's Oil Power, or, uh, Power I uh, War Sprint Car Series out in the Midwest. And then it sounds like they're going to run a, some USAC uh, uh, races as well, along with the Midget and uh, USAC 410. So... The Colfax Comet could be coming out here for the Eastern Storm. I would love to see that. He came out a couple years ago. I yeah. remember walking up to Susquehanna. Uh, shocker, we're talking about Susquehanna a whole lot here tonight. <laughs> uh, walking up to get a ticket, and this <laughs> trailer, too, pulled in, and, and me and my one buddy were like, who is this? Like, who who does this guy think he is? Like, <laughs> tires piled high in the bed of the truck all over the car. And the open trailer, by the way. And we're looking, and sure enough, we saw a little sticker. Maybe I think it was the duct tape on the side of the car <laughs> that said Robert Bell. And sure enough, we all knew who Robert Bell was that night. So pretty cool to see. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, what, can, what more can you say about yeah. Robert Bell? I know. It, and, you know, you got to feel so good for this guy. Even though I just saw a story he was robbed out there in Tulsa. His, uh, tool, it looks like some of his tools and that were stolen there. But oh. they do have a go GoFundMe up for him. And um, I'm not bit of money in there right now because you, you know sure. the race community especially for that guy i'm sure well right now race fans uh, we're going to be on the air here for a little bit right now we're going to open up the comments section to you you want to talk anything about the upcoming racing season the beer hill gang get together this weekend or whatever you want to talk about we'd be more than happy to talk about uh this season uh the special guests here tonight were ryan linder owner of x1 race both of them are ready to get in their suits get If racing fever was ever a thing, it is here. <laughs> and it's chomping at the bit to get to the track. And obviously racing extravaganza, the motorsports show this week, that's that's kind of, I don't know, it's almost like the, uh, the arrival. We're here. It's here. So I, I'm excited. Oh, definitely. I mean, I had a conversation last night with my Jumping the Cushion co-host, Brad Klinger, um, and he was saying, like, I'm not quite into racing mode yet. I'm like, well – Obviously, because you're stealing, you're still in football mode because your Steelers are going for the AFC Championship game this weekend. I said, you look at the three of us here, we're ready for racing. We've been knocked out since November. Yeah. So, you know, it's it's finally here, and I just can't wait. You know, motorsports, and then, you know, you got Atlantic City next weekend, and then race extravaganza, and then give it two more weeks, and then we're at Lincoln. I just think this is a it's a super exciting season it for is. Pennsylvania. Yeah. I mean, the diversity is is as large as I've ever seen it in the area I mean, between big name drivers, up and coming drivers, new drivers, new faces. I mean, I even saw today, I saw a video from uh, Landon Simon. Yep. The Mount, he, he tried some wing stuff last year and I just put a little comment there and said, can we expect to see you in PA? And he, you know, he mentioned the Eastern storm and the USAC shows, but he said maybe that wing card make its way out here a couple times. So, I mean, that could be another guy we see cutting his teeth in Pennsylvania. We got a lot of big races here and a lot of chances for a lot of outsiders to come in and do decent and make some money. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I, you know, a little off topic, but uh, I know Greg Hodnett is, I think, finishing up here his little stint down in yeah, Australia. Yeah, he's down there yeah, he had some issues, I think, last night and didn't make the show, but they rained out. So uh, we'll see how they're doing for the rest of the night. And uh, I, I think last minute I saw Shane Stewart, the World of Outlaws, grabbed himself a ride, and mm -hmm. he went out there, and he's run a couple races. So, <laughs> I mean, these guys – no race wherever, even if it means flying across the country to a <laughs> now, Australia. Correct, yeah. correct me if I'm wrong here. Didn't the World of Outlaws have a race in Australia a couple of years ago? Yeah, couple, I thought they did. Couple they used years to have a track, back, I believe. Oh, well, a couple of years back, they actually started their season off in Australia. I forget what year. If you fans know what year the World of Outlaws started off their season in Australia, we'd love to know. Because I think, um, I don't even know if this channel is around on TV anymore, the Outdoor Channel. No, that became. I that was I, what TNN turned it. No, TNN like, turned into Spike. Uh, yeah, right, right. No, but was I that? The, I thought the Outdoor Channel no, covered the, that race. The Outdoor Channel is still there. Uh, oh. No, that did that become Versus? Uh, or no, know. Outdoor. Yeah, Outdoor I, Life. I, I think became anymore. Versus. Me neither. TV channels. Yeah. There's there's so many TV channels. Yeah, and then Versus became NBC. What NBC Sports Network yeah. is today. So, any uh, questions from the fans, Bert? Well, I got um, uh, more of a comment here, and it's from uh, John Kylie. He goes, "Late models seem to be where the money is, unfortunately," and. I don't know if that's true. I mean, there's a lot of money in late models, but it seems like around here there's a lot of money between all the divisions around. But okay. maybe out in the Midwest, they, they have a lot. They, I mean, you don't see it so much here in the Central PA area, mm -hmm. but if you keep an eye on Lucas Oil and the World of Outlaw Craftsman late models, 
you know, they have a lot of big races. Oh, yeah. You know, you got the Dream 100 at Eldora. You know, you got the – or you have the Dream – you got the Dream the World 100 at Eldora. Obviously, you have the, uh, the big uh, finals at Charlotte at the end of the year. That doesn't pay a lot, but still that's a pretty prestige race. You have the North South 100 that pays a good amount of money, but they, I mean, they spend a lot, but they have a lot of big races. Oh my God, yeah! I mean, even throughout, and look at the following throughout the country. Like you just had the icebreaker down in Talladega uh, this last weekend. Um, what else? I mean, th- once you hit past the Mason Dixon line, that's almost where the four tens and sprint cars stop and late models begin, and then they go out west. Yeah, I'll be honest with you. I'm not as much as I love racing. I, you know. A lot of people will tell me, like, I grew up with late models at Silver Spring Speedway. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people will tell me those are not late models. Yeah, yeah. Those are, that's something else. And, you know, other than <laughs> that, that's really my knowledge of late model racing. Other than what I at Williams Grove, you know, late models is, I don't want to say I never really got into it. But, frankly, it's, you know, unless you're going to Port Royal Weekly, it's not really – it's yeah, not as I'm, big here, is it? Hey, yeah. I personally love the late models, oh, yeah. and I'm excited that they're coming to Williams Grove four times this yeah. year. I just love the show. You have four ten sprints, and you have your super I mean, there's, late models. There's I nothing like it. seeing them getting a turn at Williams Grove and seeing that tire oh, or something. Yes. The left front tire, yeah. I mean, that's that's one of the – you know, you can see the air coming off the back. It's one of the coolest things I've witnessed, and that's from a person who really doesn't – care for late models. And I'm right there with you, Justin. Like, I've, you know, I, they've kind of grown on me the past couple of years, you know, seeing them at the Grove, and then, you know, the fir- one of the first super late models I saw was the World of Outlaw uh, late models at Sealand's Grove, and I was like, yeah, these are okay. But then I saw them at Big Diamond when the, when they came mm-hmm. out there. I'm like, alright, this is ain't a bad show. The track did go away. Daryl Lanigan won that race. Um, but it was still a good show. And then I saw them for, at Port Royal in the Grove, and I'm thinking, oh, alright, these guys are really good now. <laughs> so, you know, the competition is there in Pennsylvania, and I would be surprised to see one of our guys beat the Lucas Oil guys or beat the World of Outlaw Craftsman late model guys when they come in uh, either at Port Royal or over at Sealand's Grove. They'll sleep on some of the Hagerstown regulars. No, you can't. Kobe y- Fry. Yeah, Kobe, Kobe, Kobe Fry. Fry. You know, you Billy can't. Uh, uh, the one car, Gary. Um, one Gary car. Stuller. Gary Stuller, yep. And you have Jeff Ryan from Sealand's Grove. Yeah. He's fast yeah. anywhere he goes. You know, we have a lot of contenders here in the uh, Maryland and Central PA area. That could knock the big t- this year. They're going everywhere this year, especially with how much that uh, the um, super uh, or that uh, speed week, the Appalachian Speed yep. Week, has grown. You got yeah. Susquehanna, which I'm excited for that show. Oh, me too. Yeah, and then you got you're back at the Grove. You got Path Valley, which that was one of the uh, was show of the year last year for them. You got Sealings Grove, Port Royal. So really, there is so much going on with Super Late Malls. I think they. They have one of the best schedules, I think, this year for any any division around. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. I agree. It's going to be great. But, uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to thank you for joining in. So for Andy Miller, our cameraman and our technician, hey. Justin Snyder, Robert Woolchek, I am Earl Hoon Jr. Wishing all of you a good evening. <laughs>